what's up guys. Today I'll show you a horror film, Virus 32. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in a tiny apartment in a city in Uruguay. An elderly woman takes pity on her hungry pet bird, so she quickly darts to the kitchen for some food. When she returns to its cage, the bird is no longer there. She looks inside the living room and sees that her husband is in a weird trance in front of the television. He is clutching the bird in his hand, with blood dripping from his nose. In a nearby apartment, a young red-haired woman named Iris is talking to her roommate. If you'd look around their abode, you'd assume that they are both single working women who have their lives ahead of them. This is true for the roommate who's frolicking in the dating pool. But as proven by the family picture that Iris hides in her room, it's revealed that she's actually a divorced mother. Iris ducks into her room and gets dressed for work. Someone knocks on the door, and her roommate informs her that Iris' daughter, Tata, is there. Since separating from her husband, Iris has been co-parenting with him by having custody of her daughter half the time. However, today's visit is a surprise for Iris, since it's the father's turn to take care of Tata. The daughter immediately notices the empty liquor bottles strewn around the place, and she disapproves of her mother's wild behavior. Iris dodges the topic, and instead tells Tata that she wasn't expecting her to arrive that day, and Iris must go to work. Iris leaves Tata inside her room to talk with her ex-husband. He's annoyed at her because they had already agreed to that schedule, and now Iris had forgotten she was supposed to have Tata that day. He also comments that Iris' next-door neighbors, the elderly couple, are so noisy they seem like they are killing each other. The ex-husband stands his ground, insisting that Iris has to step up and start taking care of their daughter more. Iris has no choice but to take Tata with her to work. She's currently employed as a security guard in a sports club. They leave the apartment building and walk a few blocks to her place of work. The two don't notice that mayhem is breaking out across the city. People are running and police sirens are reverberating loudly. The sports club looks dilapidated and it's mostly just Iris at the place most of the time. She sneaks her daughter inside and gives her a tour. She also puts liquor in her coffee cup when Tata's back is turned. Iris takes her to a basketball court and tells Tata to play, while she goes to her station to stand guard. She leaves her with a walkie-talkie that she can press if she needs her mother and assures Tata that she'll be watching over her through the CCTV cameras in the area. Iris leaves the room and the daughter starts playing basketball, not seeing the person pressing their hands on the window. Iris goes to her workstation and lights a cigarette. She watches her daughter through the few monitors showing the feed from the security cameras. Some time later, she goes out of the room to patrol the sports club. While walking, the lights suddenly turn off. Iris curses and calms her scared daughter down by talking to her through the walkie-talkie. She heads to the basement and fiddles with the fuse box to get the electricity going again. Tata mentions that whenever she is afraid, she thinks of one of the few happy memories they had as a family. Specifically, the one time they went to the beach with her younger baby brother. The subject of her baby son is a sore one for Iris, and she quickly ends their conversation. Iris walks back to the workstation, but stops in her tracks when she sees two men beating up another man in front of a burning car. She calls the police and runs to the balcony to talk to the male security guard stationed on a nearby street. He explains that it was just drug addicts fighting. Later, she discovers that Tata is missing. She goes to the basketball court to look for her daughter and instead spies a man running around the sports club. He runs to her like a demented zombie, blood all over his face. Iris manages to whack him and run. She locks the door behind her and traps the man on the lower floor. Iris goes to the door of the club and peeks through a hole. She sees carnage unfolding outside. An ambulance van crashed on the street with blood on the windows. A man is standing motionlessly on the sidewalk as screams echo. She finally finds her daughter in one of the rooms through the security camera feed. For a moment, Iris looks at the tattoo she has on her arm. It's the name of her baby son, with his birth year and death year. She thinks about how she had already lost one child, and if she loses Tata too, she will lose everything. Iris cries for a moment, then picks up the phone to call the landline in the room where Tata is in. Her daughter picks up and tells her that she was scared because someone had broken inside the club. Iris is about to go to Tata when she notices in the security camera feed that there's an armed man and a little girl entering the sports club. She hides under her desk. Meanwhile, someone is banging loudly on the locked door of the room that Tata hid in. She scampers to a corner and someone else gets her. The same demented man that attacked Iris earlier gets into the workstation. He looks for her and almost reaches the desk she is hiding under, but a cat comes inside the office and walks toward Iris. The demented man grabs the cat and bashes its fragile body on the floor. Iris slides out from under the desk and makes her escape. 
She sees that the man is now in a strange trance and is just frozen. Iris runs to another room. She immediately looks for her daughter and sees that Tata is still hiding. She scrolls to other footage, watching the demented man be animated again and continue beating the dead cat and watching the man on the street attacking another man as well. Iris notices that they both have a 32 second interval after each attack where they are frozen in a trance. She surmises that this 32 second period is the window to escape from the crazed killers. Intent on getting her daughter back, Iris passes through a locker room and hopes that none of the zombies are there. She quietly creeps to an adjoining hallway, where another zombie pushes her into a shower stall and attacks her. Iris runs out of the shower and into the pool area. A bearded man named Beardy suddenly yanks her with him into the pool. The zombie dives in after them, but flails around in the water and dies. She and Beardy surface from the water. He explains that the zombies can't swim, and so they drown in the water. He also adds that the infected people can be identified with the red scars on their palms. Beardy then checks Iris' palms to see if she's infected. Her palms look normal. Beardy goes on to tell her that he and his wife were in the ambulance that crashed in front of the sports club. His wife is about to give birth, and he needs Iris' help in delivering the baby. Beardy has prepared already by reading up on everything about giving birth, so he will be guiding Iris. He takes her to a separate office in the building. He then yanks the curtains open to reveal his screaming infected wife tied to a chair. Iris is horrified and tries to escape. But Beardy had locked the door when they came in. He pleads with her, telling her that he's holding on to hope that his wife will recover soon. In another twist, Beardy shows his Beardy color. He was actually the mysterious someone who grabbed Tata earlier. He is now holding her hostage to force Iris to help him deliver his child. Iris tries to fight back by pointing a sharp screwdriver at Beardy. He responds by choking her. When Iris finally relents, he loosens his grip. Beardy's first task is to move his wife to a safer location. He and Iris heed the wheelchair up a set of stairs, while he tells her how he and his wife ended up in that situation. It turns out, one night, he had woken up to his wife suddenly being infected by the mysterious virus, taking over the city. She can try to claw her own pregnant belly open, and he stopped her just in time. Ever since then, he had been keeping her tied up for everyone's safety. Yesterday, Beardy was attacked by a zombie when he was working on his boat. He accidentally pushed the zombie into the water, and he discovered that the infected could not swim. He then offers Iris and Tata a place with him and his wife on their boat, so they can be safe from the zombies. While walking, Iris finds her ex-husband lying on the floor and gravely injured. He had tried to go to the sports club to rescue her and Tata, but he was attacked by one of the zombies. The ex-husband doesn't have too long to live, and Iris comforts him in his dying breath. She tells him that he will be with their dead son soon, and he answers that she has to take care of Tata now. It is revealed through their conversation that their son had drowned to death in the pool that Iris had gotten for him. While this is going on, the white's water breaks. To add to that, the other zombies in the building sense Beardy and Iris. They are now trying to get inside the room they're in. Iris grabs the ex-husband's car keys and creates a distraction by hurling the smoke bombs that she put inside her backpack. She had planned on playing with the smoke bombs with Tata for fun earlier. A male zombie jumps on Iris, but she stabs his zombified muscles. She's about to flee when she sees a female zombie holding a knife and approaching the wife in the wheelchair. The female zombie senses that there's a human fetus inside her belly and she almost pierces the skin with the knife. Iris screams and distracts the female zombie, giving Beardy some time to whack her in the head with a metal pipe. They wheel the wife into a bedroom and tie her to the bed. At this point, she's already crowning, so he orders Iris to pull the baby out. The wife gives birth to a baby boy. Blinded by hope, Beardy places the fat baby in his wife's arms to see if she can revert to normal. But the 32 seconds run out fast and the lights in the building go out again. Iris turns on a flashlight and sees that both the baby and the wife have disappeared. They find them in the corner of the room. The wife is holding the baby's head and is about to crush it with her hands. Iris pleads with Beardy to do something. And a second later, he shoots his wife in the head to save the baby. Beardy's stoicism fades away and he's overtaken by grief. He just sits there in the corner, cradling his annoying baby. He tells Iris that Tata is in the boiler room. She takes his gun and the keys to his boat. But when she gets there, she sees Tata's backpack on the floor, beside a man's dead body. And burning inside the boiler is the charred remains of a young girl's body. Iris howls in grief and mourns her daughter. But it turns out, Tata is still alive and is hiding in one of the small rooms upstairs. She recounts that Beardy helped her hide in a boiler room and left her there. Then the man came in with his young daughter. They were the ones that Iris saw on the security camera, 
before she was attacked by the demented man. They went to the boiler room, and the man also helped Tata. But they were deluged by dozens of zombies, and they killed the man and threw his daughter inside the boiler. After the story, Iris decides to go through the green corridor so they can exit the building. However, the zombies are congested in that corridor. Luckily, the 32-second interval starts again, and they make their way along the corridor as all the zombies freeze. But when they come to the end, their time runs out, and the zombies chase them again by tracing their smell. Iris and Tata get into her father's car. As the vehicle moves forward, the zombies crowd around it. They shatter the glass windows. But it turns out the mother and daughter are no longer inside it. They had cleverly slipped down a manhole and into the sewers. They see an injured Beardy slumped on one of the metal grates, but with his beard spared, he's still holding the heavy baby. He knows that he isn't going to make it with his tidy beard, so he tells Iris the name of his boat that's docked on the nearby pier. He also asks her to take care of his baby. The demented man arrives at the sewer. Iris only has a nail gun for a weapon. Resolved in protecting Tata, she sacrifices herself. She orders her daughter to run. Once the demented man gets into a trance, he pummels Iris and beats her black and bloody. But instead of running, Tata waits until the man is frozen before shooting him in the head with a nail gun, ending his demented life. Luckily, Iris is still alive. They take the baby and make it to Beardy's boat. They stare out into the sea, finally safe from the horrors of the past night. The movie ends with the zombie in the swimming pool coming back to life, signifying that it's not true that the water can kill those infected. So Iris, Tata, and the baby are not safe after all. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.